Hello, gentle viewers, and welcome to a new series, Rise of Nations Extended Edition. Rise of Nations was a game that came out by Big Huge Games, actually about 1998, um, or right around that ballpark. Um, but there was a Thrones and Patriots expansion, and then the glorious game we see in front of us with some graphical improvements. Rise of Nations is a uh, RTS game, although it is pausable, thankfully. Um, based around um, seeing nations progress through history and get more powerful and things of that nature. And it's a ton of fun. Um, it really is. And that's what we'll be playing. So we're going to take a look at the Conquer the World campaigns. Uh, we're going to set the difficulty to easy. Um... I have played the game quite a bit in the past, but I'm fairly rusty. And more importantly, I've gotten my ass handed to me the last couple times I tried to do this campaign. So we're going to play a bit easier than I wanted to. We're going to be doing a new Conquer the World campaign. Uh, one of the things about Rise of Nations is that each nation has significant powers and advantages that makes them different to play as. The Americans, for example, get certain bonuses. Um, the Chinese get certain bonuses. Each one of these is quite different. The French are OP. Um, I genuinely believe that. Because the ability to heal for free is just ridiculous. The only other way to get good quality healing is through going the Republic route. So, anyway... Uh, we're going to go ahead and I'll talk more about the game as we get locked in. I'm going to pick a random nation. We are the Turks. Okay. Uh, really good siege weapons. Citizens are cheaper and we assimilate cities faster. And military research and siege units upgrade for free. Very nice. It uh, looks like our ideal era is the Gunpowder Age and the Enlightenment, which is fine. Um, those takes a while to get there. Now, don't we start in an unenviable place? We've got Russia right here. We've got Persia right here. India. Let's talk about the map. This is the Conquer the World map. And each turn in the game, uh, one nation does one thing. Uh, usually it's try to conquer a territory. We could really use an alliance, actually. I wonder if the Greeks would sign an alliance with us. They probably won't. Yeah, they want all of our tribute to do that. And we don't have enough to do that. So that's fine. Oh, that's a pretty good card. Um, so each territory offers certain bonuses when you conquer them. For example, if we took this territory, the Caucasus, we would gain the Obsidian Resource, which gives us constant steel and knowledge and improves all of our attack for archers, towers, forts, and cities, which is pretty great. We get Tribute, and then we would get the ability to place another army. And additional armies are important because you can use them to bum rush other territories and take them without a fight. If you ever have two more armies in another territory, you can just blow right through it in an overrun attack. Um, so tactically, uh, the other important thing to keep in mind, um, I'm just going to show you this really quick. I'm not going to do it. It costs you tribute to declare war on someone. So we're going to want to build up a bit of tribute before we take it one. I hate the Persians so much, but that's all right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go for this area here. Taking it gives us an army and it's a war party scenario. So let's go ahead and dive in. It's on easy now, thankfully. I got my ass beat several times on moderate, so this is fine. Uh, off you go, scouty boy. Go scout. Um, so this is a typical scenario for some of the 
uh, what the game calls barbarian tribes. Um, you don't have a full-fledged battle like you would in other places. Instead, um, you have a smaller task. So that's what we're going to be doing. And unpause. You'll notice you have a few different commands. Um, there's move, attack, um, forward. Forward has an advantage of keeping you in formation. Um, other than that, attack is almost always better. And then there's patrol, and you can set different formations. And we're just gonna do a basic line, and they're gonna go on the aggressive stance. We need to find and murder 25 units. Hello, civilian. Ignore the buildings. We don't care. This is a farm. Farms produce food. Please stop. That's my scout. I almost attacked my own scout. That would have been embarrassing. I'm just pressing F right now to get them to advance in formation. So that everyone else catch up. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Civilian. Do you mind if I murder you? Okay, this is their nation borders. This means we've found their city. And now he's dead. You can also just use the right mouse button to move um, people around if that's what you want. We're such war criminals right now, it's fine. What? You almost got away. Oh, this is going to be a rare change. We're actually going to attack there because it's a tower and I don't want to get my people hurt. And here comes their army. Let's talk a little bit about different units. Um, so each unit has an attack value, a defense value, and a range value. Um, because we're Turks, um, our siege units are going to get a benefit to that. So you can see Slingers do 10 damage, have one defense, 85 hit points, and have a range of 6. Our Horse Archers have more attack, more range, less defense, and a little bit fewer hit points. And there's very much a rock, paper, scissors flavor in that each type of unit is designed to counter a specific other type of unit. And you can find that out simply by clicking on the unit. For example, uh, you're really good against ranged cavalry and light infantry, but you have a problem against heavy infantry and buildings. And we're just about done, actually. We're just butchering civilians, as you do. I just have to kill two more civilians, and we win. Hooray! That was a glorious victory for the for the new Ottoman Empire. Okay, we're now in the classical age, and let's quickly see. Okay, so Persia advanced north. Greece is hemmed in, which is fine. Now we're going to pull what the kids call a dick move. 
we're going to overrun this territory just so I can get it for free. And we'll get a ton of tribute out of it as well. And then we're going to use it to make an alliance. But with whom? With whom? Now what will happen as soon as I click start, we should instantly take the territory. Well, bam. And we get a cool card, uh, which is very handy. And you cannot attack again. Only you can attack. I could attack Greece and then maybe get Persia to be my ally. you want for an alliance Persia 24 tribute done uh, which means I can now attack a Greece safely all right guys let's get it done do I want to use my card I can't really use it to my advantage so that's fine um, hopefully I'll get a chance next turn to take one of these two territories, but I probably won't. That's all right, though. This is a straightforward conquest, and these are the most, uh, these are the most fun in my opinion. Pause the game. So you start with an army, a small city, and a couple of other things. Now, because we're attacking an enemy's territory, they've actually got more than we do. They probably have a better start to their economy, which is fine. Um, scout you boy, go scout. So this is the proper basis of the game. No, please don't hide this. Um, you'll notice we have um, five resources in the classical age. Food, wood, metal, wealth, and knowledge. And all these are things we're going to have to work on as we play to, uh, to make sure that we can build an army big enough to defeat. You always start with a city and a library and generally a couple of farms. What are you? Yeah. So we're going to instantly go ahead and do some research. Uh, one of the things we want to do as quickly as possible is get up to the medieval age, which requires 12 other forms of research. What do you want to start off with? I think we always have to go for the tried and true military research, which we actually get cheaper, which is fun. Um... What do we start off with here? We've got a horse archer, a light horse, three archers, two phalanxes, three javelineers, and a supply wagon. That's pretty good. Let's move you guys over here. And our city. Step one, first time you play any campaign, you need to get your food production on. So let's do. We're not going to put it on fat. That would be stupid. Do we get an advantage on citizens too? Yeah, they're cheaper. Nice. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and make sure we have our army set. We have a, quite a good defensive position, actually. I could very easily build a fort or two to block holes, which would be terrific. And then we need three more to get the woodcutter's camp running. A rare resource, obsidian. Hey, we could get the extra super obsidian. It's pretty great, actually. Um... You get over there. We'll build a citizen. Library, give me civics level one, please. Can I build a tower? I most certainly can. Then let's build one right here. And then you're going to build me a barrack so we can start working on units. That's a really good starting shot. We're going to get a lot of production out of this city once it's fully developed. 
Um, give me science, please. Or roads, actually, and then probably science, because we'll want a temple as soon as we can get one. Right. Let's get harvesting some metal. I gotta put the next city like right up here, maybe. I'll have to give it a, I'll have to give it some thought. Um give me a mine, please. Wanna make sure it's in the economic radius of the city. So we can build things like smelters and stuff to improve it. Um Got ourselves a barracks. Let's build our first phalanx. I think we're going to take a chance we're going to advance this way and build our city out here. You'll notice we're already limited on food production. Um, so the first thing we're going to need is a reliable supply of food. Horsey. Oh wait, we unlocked uh, we unlocked markets, didn't we? After we build our city, that's gonna be the next thing I build. There we go. Uh, build me a market, please. And then I need wood. For level one science. Sheep. Excellent. Okay, we've got some sea out here. That's good. Maybe we won't have to worry about direct attacks be pretty pumped about that I'm not gonna lie and go ahead and get working on food library I'm also gonna want once this place has all of its food requirements met I'm gonna start working on chopping down more trees down there You'll notice, so the score is based on a few different things, um, but we're ahead by a pretty substantial margin, and I hope to keep it that way. I'll also get going on a woodcutter's cane. Go and help her build a woodcutter's camp. Did I get my market? I did. I would like a caravan and a merchant. Perfect. Um, siege factories. Because artillery is such a big advantage for us, it actually kind of makes a bit of sense to rush for it. After this uh, citizen is ready, we're going to build another farm. Oh, you saucy wench. You've already built a senate. Ahem. <clears throat> You saucy, saucy wench. Another farm, if you please. Let's do that one more time. I mean, what we've been doing will pay off in the long run. But uh, I'm a bit worried about his score. We're not developing as quickly as he is. Um... 
want granaries and lumber mills. I when I first started playing this game, I had a real tendency to forget about those, and now they're just they are life because they make existing cities more productive, which means you don't have to expand as quickly, which is all fantastic. How about our getting ourselves a nice, lovely temple? Yeah, he's really starting to catch up to us in score. Um, he's probably expanding a bit more quickly than we are. Uh, give me one, two, three. Ah, oh, we need more gold. That's fine. Um, perfect. Can we build another farm? We cannot. Let's instead build a granary then. We're also going to need a university so we can start getting some knowledge done. Right. We've hit our commerce cap for wood. Um, which is actually quite good because it gives me a reason to research commerce. Um, I don't really want a coastal city. I'm going to be honest with you because that could leave us vulnerable to attack. Let's come out here and build a city up here. Get ourselves a good city for lumber. Uh, Merchant Boy. <clears throat> Alright, it's time to start screwing around. We need to start getting the army properly developed. Give me a siege factory, please. And I will build one more dude over there. So if you look at the granary, first of all, we can improve food production, but second, we can make troops faster, which is just perfect. Uh, university, I keep forgetting. I mean, I keep forgetting that I said I was going to build a university, and I keep not doing it. Because we need knowledge, or we're not going to get anywhere. Still haven't found Sparta yet. Uh, and to be honest, I'm perfectly fine with that. Back to the library. Um, <clears throat> we need both a more regular source of wealth, which we'll get from the temple, and uh, let's also get ourselves a couple of caravans. Let's go unlock ourselves some horses. And some sheep. Okay, we finally found the Spartans. They're up here. At least one of their cities is. So one of the first things we're going to want to do is block off one of the most direct approaches they could make, which is right here. If I build a fort here, we'll have a fair bit of protection. Not a perfect amount of protection, but a good amount of protection. So we're going to build the floor right here. I think it's going to work out really well for us as a way to um, prevent any issues. We need to come down here and get ourselves the commerce cap. For which we need knowledge. Okay, let's stop dicking around with that then. And then where is my temple? I built one. I know I built one. Where's my stupid temple? Oh, there it is. Taxation. 
I arguably one of the most important techs in the game. All right, we have a load of food and a load of metal, which means let's start making phalanxes. I think five of them would be a lovely start. And let's get a supply wagon. And I still haven't built the Senate yet. Come on, Abby, you know better than that. The only reason the Senate matters, by the way, is because it changes your capital. But if we're not going to change your capital, then it doesn't matter. Uh, and they're fighting my scout. Let's pause and see what they've got, actually. So here's the city of Sparta, which is not their capital. They've got a barracks. There's their library. So their capital's right up here. Okay. Good. We've learned something important. Namely, that we can expand a bit more freely in a, curtain, in a couple of directions, which is great. Um, it's always good to know where you can and can't expand. Are we at the caravan limit yet? I don't think we are. Oh, we're getting close to the population limit. Let's go ahead and research military. And before we start building a really massive military, we want to find out where we want to site it. Somewhere fairly close to the enemy, but also somewhere that's fairly well defended. We'll give that some thought. One, two, three, four. I can build one more farm over here. We've hit the cap again. This is great. All right, buddy. Uh, build me a farm, please, and thank you. All right. I love forts. They're so good. This would be a great place for another fort. But we also do want to get another city when we get a chance. But I think we're going to go ahead and take the other obvious choice of putting a fort right here. And then once we're done with that, um, we'll start to do some other things. Okay. We're lagging behind in knowledge production, but I think now is the time to start really focusing on the army. Let's get y'all moved up. Actually, I take it back. The thing to do now would be to actually advance to the medieval age as soon as we can. That would be really good. And I just need, what, two more techs, right? Smelter. Let's go ahead and build a lumber mill. Mostly because I want the other tax involved in it too. We're going to build it over here because there's actually two woodcutters camps there. Which means it'll really drive things up a bit. I would love some agriculture please. What sort of resource are you? Your gems. Uh, the next city we build is going to be right here. And actually, let's do just that. Let's build another city. Okay. I don't want to start attacking them yet. But I think we're in a position where we might be doing that in the near future. Oh, I haven't researched my government yet. You want to be a republic. Because I want the ability to heal my units, which is one of the few things a republic gives you that's really beneficial. Can we get level 2 taxation? We can. We need a bunch of knowledge. Um, Ankara, build a university, please. And let's get the senator up with the rest of the army. A 
Oh, do we have the... We need... Oh, we need the Medieval Age to unlock the Super Library. That's fine. We're going to save up research until we can get the Medieval Age. Uh, please come over here. And we'll build a city right there. Is my lumber mill done? It is. Not to market. Where the hell is my lumber mill? I built one, didn't I? I'm not used to this style of buildings yet. There it is. Uh, please give me a boost to output and then unlock construction. And then build me a city right here. Okay. We're at a stage, we're about to go into the medieval age. I'm going to start building up army buildings. So we're going to want two barracks. That's the first step. And medieval age. So we want two barracks, a stable, and a siege factory. Hi, Corum. Can you very quickly build me a fort right here? Wabam. And then we need military four to start upgrading people. Done and done. I should get a low on metal. Oh, that's right. I meant to build a smelter and I never did. I also just actually just make a bunch of civilians. Or citizens, rather. And just mine the crap out of some metal. Actually, where's Istanbul's? Oh, this would actually be perfect. Right. Build a civilian, tell him to go there. Citizen. Damn it. Alright. Start with... Um, crossbowmen and... Phalanxes. You'll notice we instantly upgraded to trebuchets, too, which is just the best. Yeah, metal has to be the next thing we work on. I mean, we could upgrade to Elite Javelineers, although they're not really that important. Oh, we need a stable. Um, stable, and then you build us another siege factory. And then we're going to start cranking out units like they're going out of style. You notice the fort is now a castle. All right, let's start building pikemen on infinite and crossbowmen on infinite. Okay, so the one thing this leaves us weak to is caval is uh, is heavy cavalry, which is what we build cavalry for. Ah, they must have sent a scout out. Okay, um. We could get some heavy horse archers. Let's unlock knights. Uh, and All right, let's address metal. I feel pretty confident about our other abilities that I want to get ourselves in good position to produce metal. 
Um, oh, you. Okay. Um, come back here and build a farm. That's fine. Ankara, you are ideally placed to be metal central. So let's build two citizens. Oh, can I upgrade? God damn it. I was hoping to get to them first. Oh, well. We still have a pretty big advantage, though. And it's really just, at this point, it's just a matter of timing it. Boom. This is going to instantly double our metal production once we get that full. And that's what we wanted. And we're going to make it more ridiculous by building a smelter here. Get back here. Um, let's start putting knights on infinite. I think that's going to be the backbone of our army. It's going to be phalanxes, crossbowmen, knights, and then our ridiculous siege equipment. And then let's get our killer university tech. Well, bam. Um, let's keep researching. What do we need next? Another city or raise the commerce cap? Let's raise the commerce cap. Hey, Ankara became a large city. Nice. And we do need four science so we can research foraging. What are you? You're light horse. Eh. It's hard to get as excited about that, but we'll research it, sure. do need some more wealth. Um, let's increase the caravans. We can't research. I could try to research social contract. Yeah, wealth's actually lagging behind quite badly. Uh, one, two, three. One, two. We could build a city over here, actually. That might be the next place I build a city. Come on, damn it. Give me... Okay, we're at the caravan limit. Stupid gold. Um, right. We've got tons of food, tons of metal. Pikemen. Crossbowmen. And I think some more horse archers actually would be lovely. So right now this one, we're just going to build a ridiculously huge army and then we're going to go squish them. Um, that's generally how these things go. All right. Oh, I can get Oath of Fealty if I get a bit more gold, but that's all right. Uh... How many supply wagons? I have two. Okay. Perfect. We can basically now build as many pikemen as we want to because uh, we have the food and the metal. We don't have a ton of wealth, which is going to make it hard to keep up 
on the cavalry. I think it's actually a pretty good sized army. We might want to go after them now. At least try to weaken them a bit. Um, okay. So each one only gives you plus 25, so the most you'll ever get is 200. All right. Grab them all. And here we go. Now the important thing is to keep these all on infinite as long as we possibly can. Because what that'll mean is any losses we take we'll be able to replace much more easily. Whoa, look at those trebuchets. I'm already, we're just hitting this because we can right now. And I'm going to see what kind of responses provokes. They're not coming to defend this, which is very strange to me. Why would you not defend your territory? Bam. Done. Hello, Thebes. Would you like to be a Turkish city? Of course you would. I think we really need to build a few more horse archers, too. I like that they're great against civilians, making them the perfect raiding unit. All right, I have not seen a single unit um, here. Y'all hit the city. Okay, here we come. Here's their army. Uh, no, you guys keep hammering the city. And then I want to come down here and get Oath of Fealty upgraded. Uh, once you take a city, um, you get everything in its in uh, that in its economic radius except for military buildings. All right, I think this would be a perfect opportunity to bring in some extra troops. So go to it, gentlemen. Go to it. Um, and Waban, the city of Thebes, is now our city. Uh, and what it'll do is it'll slowly heal over time. This is what the infinite queue is great for, though. I'd literally just tell them, here, keep building. And then I can actually use this as a, as a staging point to build more, um, more military buildings. Maybe get a fort going on.
No, because I want you building military buildings so we can really fuck them up. I'm going to tell you to build two barracks and a state. I like how it's Lysander is Sparta, but Sparta is not the capital. And let's grab all these wonderful folks and get them involved in the fun. No, right there. Here, just kill the stupid stable. <clears throat> Their capital's right up here, by the way. So let's continue, because there's, again, there's really no reason not to. Where are you going, Senator? I don't love that these trebuchets are right here, but I guess it doesn't really matter. So now here's where we just get silly. I'm just going to start building an infinite number of units. We've done it again, you guys. We've hit the population cap. Yeah, we've basically won this. This is just a question of bringing down Athens. Whoa, 23 damage with a ridiculous max range of 19. That's so good. I shall kill your despot. Your pikemen, go attack him. <clears throat> ah, this was the one weakness, unfortunately, that we were going to lose uh, our trebuchets. But we can always make more. You leave our poor trebuchets alone, you jerks. Um, let's go ahead and stop the infinite queues down here. Because <clears throat> they no longer serve a purpose. We pretty much have this in the bag now. Twenty three damage a hit. Nice. Up, oh, so he's about to fall. And so what this is going to do, basically, is the AI is going to take every military unit it can possibly gather and try to come after us. Because if they can't retake their capital, we win the game. Just why we're going to add as many soldiers as we can to make sure that doesn't happen. You can also just conquer every city on the map. Um, that's the other way to win a conquest scenario. There's one back here, too.
Uh, CG boys, please hit their military infrastructure. Excellent. Athens has been assimilated. That's, again, that Turkish bonus. We assimilate stuff 200% faster, which is really good. Oh, uh, let's go and increase the speed, actually. Because we've already won this. We're basically just wasting our time right now. One minute and ten seconds. Whoa-bam. Oh, I took their last city. Okay. Done. And so we can use the Greek special powers uh, in a later battle if we want to, which is really handy. Let me get 50 tribute. Nice. Okay. So that's a bit problematic, but... It is what it is. There's not much I can do about it. Now, what do we do next? I kind of wish we hadn't befriended Persia, and I wish that we'd befriended someone else. But that's okay. <clears throat> um, I think Germany's our next bet. Possibly. Uh, see, the problem is they've got two... They're going to have two armies... They're going to get support. I don't like that. Alternatively, we could go into Africa. That is sick. Oh, that's a great wonder. Okay. Um, is there another wonder that we can see? Maybe Egypt wouldn't be a bad call. Right, so Persia's our ally. They can't attack us. We've basically forced them to march east. I know what we're going to do. Uh, can I get Germany to be my ally? You don't want it. Well, that's because you're a jerk. Fine. Because um, here's the thing. I could use my teleportation card once I've conquered this territory and we can hit both of these and get a third army. I really like the idea of going after Egypt next. Ideally too before the age advances though. So okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to move you here. I'm going to move you here. And that's going to end this episode. Um, next time around, we're going to do the Nomad scenario. And then we're hopefully going to get a two-pronged attack on Egypt. Um, Italy's really weak, too. The Romans are really weak. Mm. But So basically, I think my plan's going to be, as long as Persia stays my ally, let them deal with Asia. And I'm going to push south and try to take Africa... I'd love to get a dual-pronged assault on Italy, which means coming after the Sahara, which is fine. But uh, that's going to do it for now. Until next time, this has been Avindian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.